Welcome to Broadmoor Community Church, a church in the heart of Colorado Springs that believes so strongly, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. We are in the midst of epiphany, finding out new aha moments and hearing God's still, small voice. And on this day, we come hoping and praying that God will meet us. Even though we know God has been with us, we ask God to make God's presence known to us. I am Reverend Ann Cubbage, and it is my privilege to be the senior pastor here. We have several things happening. All of our music groups start up this next week, so if you live in town and would like to be a part of handbells or children's groups or adult choirs, please come by 315 Lake Avenue. There are also youth groups and Sunday school and fellowship groups, all of those. If you are in town, you are welcome, whether you're visiting for the first time or whether you just simply want to come by and say hello. I want to thank you for your generosity of prayer. It is because of your prayers that our ministries can continue in the strength that they are currently running. Thank you. I want to also thank you for your generosity of your financial gifts. When we give to God, we can give in so many places, and I know that you have many choices. Please know that what we do with your gifts are continuing to spread God's good news and grace of Jesus Christ throughout our community. There are slides that run at the end of the service. If you would like me to pray with you, there is a way to contact me. There are ways for you to give several different ways, and there are several of the activities I just mentioned. And now I would invite you to take in a deep breath and to let it out, no matter where you might be, on the couch, in the car, on the road, wherever you might be, know that God is with you. You are loved. Let us worship. Holy One, you have told us over and over again that you are our God, that you have called us in righteousness, that you will take us by the hand and keep us, that you will and have given us as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. On this morning, O oh God, we ask you to fill us. Bring your Holy Spirit in and around us that we may be this covenant, this light, this hope for your world. Amen.
Hello everyone, it's Miss Liz. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. It's so good to see you. Thank you for watching. So my friends, last week we talked about being lights in the world. We talked about how we are all loved and called by God to share God's great love with others that we come in contact with every day. I wonder if you have wondered just how we do this. So I thought we'd talk about that a little bit today. One of the ways we can be lights in the world is by sharing our gifts and talents with others. We all have things that we are very good at doing, that we like to do, that make us feel all warm and excited inside when we do them. And these gifts and talents are just the things that God wants us to share with others. This is how we can be lights. Some of the things that you might be good at are things like drawing pictures. You may be a wonderful artist and you can use your art to spread light to the world. You might be quite strong. You might be good at lifting heavy objects and helping your family do things like carry groceries in from the car. And you can use your strength to share light with the world. You might be a very, very kind person. You might be very good at including other people at school or on the playground, when you see someone left out, your kind heart might reach out to them so that they feel included. And this is another way that you can share light to the world. So, my friends, this week, I want you to think about all those things that you're good at and ask God to help you use those gifts and talents to share light with the world. Will you do that? Why don't we say a prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Please help me to use my gifts and talents to share light with the world. We love you, God. Amen. All right, my friends, go out, use those gifts, talents, and abilities 
to be light in this world. A reading from Selections of Chapter 42 in the book of Isaiah. Here is my servant. I have made him strong. She is the chosen one. I am pleased with them. I have given them my spirit and they will bring justice to the nations. Did you hear that? You have been made strong. You are God's chosen one. When Jesus was baptized, the barrier between God and humanity was breached. The heavens were torn apart and the spirit descended. That happened the day you were baptized too. You too were named and claimed as God's beloved child. And you have been given God's spirit so that you can bring justice to the nations. Will you pray with me, please? Holy and loving God, we ask that you would speak your word to us today, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we may know what it is you have to say to us, and that we may have the feet and the hands to move forward. Help us to walk wet. Amen. How good it would be for the world if every day along every sidewalk and in every hallway, each of us could hear the squish, squish, squish of our shoes and see the visible water excess left behind with each step. That is walking wet. How good it could be if we were to walk that way each day, remembering our baptism, mine and yours, the event of God's grace, that which we go back to day after day. Walking wet. I can't remember exactly when I first heard that phrase, but I like it. It's what we Christians do. Well, at least what we should. What other choice do we really have? Martin Luther once said, when you wash your face, remember your baptism. I, I want to say, every time you take a shower, get soaked in the rain, go swimming, get sprayed by the hose, fall into the lake, remember your baptism. What a great way to live each day, day after day. When we remember that we are still wet from the font, we are much more likely to listen carefully for the still, small voice of God. Sometimes God's whispers come in surprising ways and unexpected forms. At a time when people are searching for meaning and purpose, for real and authentic encounters with God far beyond the walls of any churches, I believe we are called as baptized persons to show up and listen where the people are. Squish, squish, squish. Walking wet makes it very clear something is happening, but it isn't finished. Each one of us is a wet, sometimes even soggy, work in progress, aware that we simultaneously inspire interest and need a towel. We are called to create and hold space where people can learn to trust that God is present. We can be a living, breathing witness to the unconditional love of God. It can actually draw people to the source of living water. The Hebrew prophet Amos reminds us thousands of years later that God calls us to let justice roll down like the waters, holy water, living water, cleansing water. Talk about walking wet. Walking wet is also what happens when we stand by people in their tears, soaked in their suffering and pain. We can remember those baptismal promises to seek 
and serve Christ in all persons, and to strive for justice and peace among all people. And we are compelled, with God's help, to challenge the systems that make folks cry. Martin Luther King Jr. certainly understood this. Walking wet is a good reminder that we are still learning and growing. It is a protection against becoming overwhelmed by the scale of injustice, the magnitude of evil. Instead, we are called to do the next right thing, whatever it is that is directly in front of us. We, like Jesus, are compelled by the water on our skin to step out in solidarity with the poor and the marginalized, the oppressed and maligned. The Ten Boom family certainly understood this in World War II. Being Christian is not a solitary, passive enterprise. It requires that we be bold and vulnerable, lead and follow. Baptism is just the beginning of our lifelong journey of walking wet. It sends us into the world. It does not make us more churchy. Walking wet witnesses to the world that we do indeed have a story, a story of extravagant love, of the miraculous and the mundane, a story of life, and death, a story of redemption and resurrection. Squish, squish, squish. God's action through the waters of baptism gift us. First of all, we are named and claimed as God's child, loved now and forever. If you ever, ever wonder who you are or who you belong to, Look at those wet footprints you're leaving. The waters of baptism gift us. We are made members of the body of Christ and ministry partners in some local congregation of faith. And when we move to a new town or new country, our baptism goes with us. The waters of baptism gift us because we experience the influence of the Holy Spirit and all those spiritual gifts like gentleness, kindness, mercy, love, etc. Because of these gifts and so many others, we can spend our days and moments sloshing our way through God's world. Each one of us is a part of something huge and eternal. Our walking wet serves to water and nourish a world that is parched from selfishness and a desire by so many to ignore the ways of God and the love of Jesus given to all. Our world needs us to walk drenched, soaked, sopping, dripping wet. We are to live our lives immersed in the promises given at our baptisms. Karen Bockelman tells a story in Lutheran Women Today, excuse me, Lutheran Woman Today, about walking along a beach on the shore of Lake Michigan. She was struck by the side of the beach covered by smooth, round, white stones. They had been washed, rolled, and tumbled for eons. It reminded of her, her of her own life. So she thought about taking a stone home as a remembrance. However, a friend pointed out to her the sign that said, just there, do not remove stones from the beach. Fine, $25. She realized then that she had been offered a deep, much deeper metaphor than a memory. The stones needed to stay in and by the water, shaped by the waves, just as she needed to stay in and by the waters of baptism, shaped by the Spirit of God. Lisa Kimball writes, We are wet with the waters of baptism, washed and made new through the Holy Spirit. Walking wet means allowing ourselves to be somewhat conspicuous, in some ways ordinary, but distinctly different from the urgent, fashionable, competitive posture American society wants to reward. 
in baptism, we are marked as Christ's own forever. Learning to claim our identity as people of God and live into our high calling as the baptized community is lifelong work. Isaiah wrote, I am the Lord God. I created the heavens like an open tent above. I made the earth and everything that grows on it. I am the source of life for all who live on this earth. So listen to what I say. I chose you. I chose you to walk. Excuse me. I chose you to bring justice. And I am here at your side. I selected you and sent you to bring light and my promise of hope to the nations. You will give sight to the blind. You will set prisoners free from dark dungeons. So today, I invite you to find some water. And as you go out and as you come in, scoop up a handful of water and splash it on your head. The messier, the better. Walk into the world literally wet and claim anew the grace, love, and acceptance that was prayed over your head in baptism. Let us walk wet together as members of the body of Christ. Squish, squish. As we come to this time of prayer, I invite you once again to remember your baptism, to get yourself wet, to recognize that you are a beloved child of God, that God is with you always, and that when you walk, you are to walk wet. I invite you to a time of silence. I will then say a prayer, and we will together say the words that are on the screen. The Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Amazing God, we come to you today wanting, desiring, hoping that we can truly, truly live into that which you have created us to be, beautiful and beloved. We know that there are days that we are just not going to get it. But we also know that with your Spirit's guidance, we can be mouthpieces for those who cannot speak. We can listen carefully with our ears and our hearts in order to bring peace and resolution to moments and experiences of injustice, oppression. We can give of our plenty to those who have nothing. And more than anything, God, we can love. We give you thanks for these gifts that you have given to us. And we ask that you would grant us the courage to use them in ways that bring to this world 
your good news, and your love. We have so many joys and concerns. Mostly we are concerned about the turmoils that are happening in other places like floods in California and wars across the seas, violence south of us. Holy God, we would ask that you would bring resolution to each of those situations, that you would bring comfort and strength to those who so desperately need your comfort and your strength. And we pray these things in the name of your Son, who taught us what it means to walk wet, to live as people of God, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. now go out into the world, knowing that God will guide you, and knowing that those footsteps, those footprints that you leave as you walk the earth are sharing God's love and God's justice water with every person. Go in peace, walking wet. Mm -hmm.